Welcome to the show. We are broadcasting live from Sylvester's Restaurant in downtown Northampton. This is the Hot Chocathon for Safe Passage. As you know, the Run the Walk is this coming Sunday, and we are here because we want to raise money for Safe Passage. There will be a $1,000 goal this morning, so we ask you to please do this because we have with us at this table the United States Poet Laureate Juan Felipe Herrera. We are so pleased, so honored to have him. He will be at Smith College this evening, do a reading, assigning a Q&A. He'll be at Weinstein Auditorium at 7.30. Weinstein Auditorium is at Wright Hall. That's right next to the library on the Smith College campus. We also have with us Rich Michelson and Monty Belmonte. Juan Felipe Herrera, I am just honored to have you. I was just thrilled to learn of your appointment and wrote and recorded a Civil Liberties Minute in honor of that event. But I really want to know one thing from you. How do you become the United States Poet Laureate? I mean, you wake up one morning and someone sends you an email. How does that work exactly? Well, well you wake up in the afternoon uh, when you get a phone call. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't ask you why you were just waking up or what you were doing the night before. Is that, that part of the deal? Well, you know, it, it, was, it was just one question. It, and there was a Dr. Uh, James Billington from the Library of Congress. And he said, uh, would you be willing to, uh, to be the Poet Laureate of the United States? And I, I had to go with it. And I said, uh, yes, Dr. Billington. And then he said, uh, do you have any questions? I go, no, Dr. Billington. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make you improvise a poem on the spot just to make sure you were ready? <laughs> uh, he probably was about to, but I kind of answered quickly. And he was off and running. Did you have any idea this was coming? I know you've been the Poet Laureate of the State of California. And you've had many honors and awards. But any idea that you were about to be appointed the Poet Laureate of the United States? No, it was, I had no idea at all. You know, uh, uh, Robert Capper, who's the director of the Poetry Center at the Library of Congress, had asked me uh, weeks before. He said, uh, "Let's set up a meeting uh, three weeks from now, and uh, I'll give you, uh, and and call me, okay? Or I'll give you a call." And I said to myself, three weeks from now? Why would he want me to, uh, you know, wait for him for three weeks?" And that's a long time to sit by the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I said, "Why? Why is this happening?" And uh, so I, I joke with him. I mean, I, the phone rang, and I said, hey, I always joke about uh, grilled cheese sandwiches with him. It's a, just an inside joke. And the phone rang, and I answered it, and I said, uh, yes, this is Juan Felipe. I'm going to deliver uh, two-by-four uh, grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> and then it wasn't Rob. <laughs> it was Dr. Billington. So, <laughs> so that's what happened. Uh, you are noted as the nation's first Latino poet laureate. Is this a designation or a moniker that you feel comfortable with, that you're happy with? What's your reaction to that? Because it's widely reported, you're widely described that way, and of course it's true, but I wonder about that phrasing, and I was thinking about that this morning, so I'd appreciate your thoughts about that. Well, you know, I have to go with the flow because uh, the, the goal is to, uh, to present poetry and to uh, encourage poetry and to call on poetry from everyone in the United States. So I go with the flow. You know, it can be, it can be a little ticklish here and there, uh, being put in a, in a you know, labelized uh, corner at the same time. Uh, I am the first Latino Poet Laureate, and it's fine. It's true. And I'm also the first Latino, the 21st uh, Poet Laureate. That's true. And I'm also a human Poet Laureate, and that's true. Mm -hmm. So I'll go with all three wrapped in one. <laughs> We're speaking with Juan Felipe Herrera. He is the United States Poet Laureate. We are broadcasting live from Sylvester's Restaurant in downtown Northampton. This is the Hot Chocathon, and we are raising $1,000 here in this hour for Safe Passage. And I want you to know, listeners, if you come down to Sylvester's now, within the hour, that Juan Felipe Herrera will sign for you and inscribe one of his collections of poetry. He has a number of them here. If you come down, give us a generous gift, and he will inscribe your book in your collection of poetry. It's an honor to have Juan Felipe Herrera with us, and with joining us at the table, we have Northampton's own erstwhile for poet laureate, Rich Michelson. Rich, thanks for joining us. You have some questions for yeah, Mr. Herrera. See, see uh, this one has gone from the California Poet Laureate to the United States Poet Laureate. Down, Rich, Rich down, Rich. Rich. No, North this is not precedent for uh, the Northampton <laughs> Poet Laureate. I don't know how to break that to you. Calvin Coolidge became president of the United States no, after being mayor here, though, so you I'm never saying, know. I feel like one of these uh, old sports stars, you know, after being Northampton. Now I'm on the radio, I'm interviewing the laureates. I'm going the other way. Um, Juan, you also were the son of migrant uh, farm workers um, how what was your first introduction to poetry to words how did that how did that flow 
Well, you know, it's a, it's, it's a world of stories being a migrante, you know, a campesino uh, child and growing up. Uh, it's a world of stories. It's a world of poetry. It's a world of uh, sayings and riddles. And my mother uh, was a, a riddle uh, maker and a poetry maker. And my father was a story maker. Uh, since he, uh, since you know, since he crossed the border at the age of 14 in the late 1800s, and he would tell me about those things and play his harmonica and go to work in the fields at the late ages, uh, in the late 60s. Uh, he was in his late 60s and early 70s in those scorching fields. Uh, so I just kind of lived in a world of words and a world, a world of uh, people's literature. Uh, and that's how I began. So you were encouraged by your parents. So when they knew that you wanted to be a poet or you, um, I mean, you're in a tradition of uh, Whitman, Ginsburg, uh, this all-encompassing thing. So that was something that uh, they were proud of. Well, you know, it was it's a natural thing. It, it was uh, We didn't talk about careers or becoming anything. It was just about uh, a day-to-day -day, uh, life. And they worked hard, and I was out there in the fields with them, I, uh, near the fields, because I was too small to work in those fields. It was imp impossible. Uh, so I just heard the stories uh, after, the, after my uh, father came home, and we sat around uh, the little apartment or in the trailer or outside the trailer. All right. You're listening to Juan Felipe Herrera, who is reading tonight at Smith College, 730, Weinstein Auditorium and Wright Hall. Do not miss this, folks. Uh, I just got back from Miami where I heard Juan read at the Miami Book Festival. He is wonderful. It is worth your time. Please come down. Um, and uh, come down now, raise some money for safe passages. Uh, it's important. Um, one, you wrote you, one of your famous books, 187 Mex uh, Mex Reasons Mexicanos Can't Cross the Border, came out over 20 years ago. Um, now I think we're going to have even more reasons, right? Uh, you are one of the great list makers in poetry, um, the way it flows, it's, it's just unbelievable. To me, you've also written a wonderful poem, 21 Reasons Republicans Can't Jump. Uh, one of the reasons <laughs> is that um, it reminds them of crossing the border. Um, but as Poet Laureate of the United States, okay, you're the Poet Laureate to Republicans, to Democrats, to everyone. Um, do you feel a responsibility to um, to uh, talk about these social issues to encompass everyone well you know for me it's it's uh, it's being a poet you know it's uh, I don't even think uh, beyond that it's about being a poet you know and being a poet is uh, is talking about uh, what's go going on it's talking about what has happened and it's also talking uh, as best as we can about what's about to come uh, and about what's going on I was um, when I was in Miami uh, or in my recent travels, put it that way, uh, uh, a young mother came up to me and said, you know, I want bilingual books for my child. I want bilingual children's books. I can't find them. I don't, I don't know where they are, and I go to the bookstores. They're not there. So that's real. So then I'm, I'm moved by that. So well, then I began to talk about it, write about it. Right. That's, well. that's interesting because not only do you cross borders literally in your poetry, but you also uh, cross borders linguistically. Uh, your poems are sometimes partly in Spanish, partly in English. Um, I noticed, I was interested in your last book, that uh, you have some poems that are uh, translated directly into Spanish, but it says they were translated by someone else? By Lauro Flores. Uh, he's a good friend of mine uh, up in Seattle at the University of Washington, professor. I know him since the uh, late 70s. So do you write, you don't write both in Spanish and English, but you do. So when do you choose to translate a whole poem? How does that work? <laughs> well, he's such a fine, uh, he really masters the, the Spanish language. And, you know, I, I, I said, you know, Laura, can you just help me on this and just, just go for it? Uh, and when I feel like doing it, then I'll do it. But we're partners, so we work together. Mm -hmm. Did you start writing in Spanish or in English or both? Were you bilingual? Have you been bilingual your entire life? Yes, I've been bilingual my entire life. Uh, uh, and I was so bilingual that I even took Spanish courses in middle school because <laughs> because I wanted to, you know, get the accents. And, we all know. take English courses even if we only grow up speaking English. So. <laughs> so I wanted to get those, yeah, right. So I wanted to get those accents right and, uh, you know, the tenses and all that. But, no, I was speaking Spanish all along. And the... Uh, uh, but, you know, we live in, a, in a, a polylingual world. You know, we all speak and know and feel and experience many languages every split second. 
We are speaking with Juan Felipe Herrera. He is the Poet Laureate of the United States. We are here at Sylvester's Restaurant in downtown Northampton. We are trying to raise money for Safe Passage. This is the Hot Chocathon. We invite you to go online to whmp.com and make a contribution, whmp.com. Really easy to navigate that web page. You'll get right to the place to make your contribution. And if you come down now to Sylvester's Restaurant, the Poet Laureate of the United States will inscribe one of his collections of poetry for you. We'd appreciate your coming down and doing that, giving us a check or cash, and make a contribution for Safe Passage. And as a thank you, we will give you one of the Poet Laureate's books. We also I have think- uh, gift certificates for Elements Hot Tub and Spa, where you could take a soak. Ooh. We have tickets to UMass Wait. Basketball. And I want to say thank you to District Attorney Dave Sullivan, who came in uh, to get a cup of coffee. No stranger to the work that uh, Safe Passage does in helping in the legal aspects in, in regards to what, uh, what it means to navigate through domestic violence, and he just made a generous $100 contribution to the uh, WHMP team for the uh, hot chocolate run happening this Sunday. So you can go to whmp.com to make your donation or come down and beat the Poet Laureate of the United States and, and get an inscribed book. And we'll be right back. Live from Sylvester's Restaurant on Pleasant Street in uh, Northampton. And now we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We are broadcasting live from Sylvester's Restaurant in downtown Northampton. This is the Hot Chocathon. We are honored to have with us the United States Poet Laureate Juan Felipe Herrera. Rich Michelson, the erstwhile Northampton Poet Laureate, is with us as along with Juan Monte Belmonte. Uh, and I will say I forked over some donations to Safe Passage so that I could get an autographed book by the Poet Laureate. Uh, so you better hurry Felipe down, Herrera, folks, before Monty buy, gets I'm gonna, all I'm the books. Buy all the books. He's, uh, and then the Poet Laureate donated. <laughs> he matched my donation on the table there, and he, he gave all the books. So there you go. That's right. It's so, all for a good cause. The Hot Chocolate Run is this Sunday, and we're, this is in support of the HMP team that is running and walking on Sunday. And you can come down and get a book, too. And you can have the book inscribed to you by our Poet Laureate, Juan Felipe Herrera. Come down now to Sylvester's Restaurant. Or if you can't do that, you can go to the WHMP website, to make a contribution. Rich right. Michelson? Right. Juan, I'd like to, let, let's start out this uh, session uh, with having you read a poem, to give people a little taste of what they're going to hear tonight. Um, so well, let's uh, dig in something from uh, your book, Senegal Taxi. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'll read a poem. Uh, actually, in Senegal Taxi, it's, it's, uh, the poems are mud drawings. Uh, drawn by uh, kind of like the main voice, or this is a book in various voices of a small family of children who are escaping from Darfur, and uh, but they're ghost children already. And this is mud drawing number 12, Ibrahim, the village boy, the older one. Taxi, taxi, people call. In the Brooklyn, where? Senegal, I tell them. I come from Senegal. No one knows Darfur. Sometimes I could drive, drive back to my village. Father Mohammed herds cattle, waves his hand so I can help him. Mother Nazra plants sorghum. She is telling story with the women. Little Sahel swats flies, laughs when she hits when she hits one, and it spins dizzy to the earth, stunned, then dead. This was before Janjaweed, before genocide wars, father would say. You said second in Houston, Houston in the village, right? You're listening to Juan Felipe Herrera, um, the United States Poet Laureate. He will be reading tonight at Smith College, 730, Weinstein Auditorium in Wright Hall. Uh, don't miss it. It's going to be a treat. I think, Juan, one of the things you do better than just about anybody I know in your poetry is that you, you combine this kind of oral tradition with a written tradition. Um, your, your poems are both, uh, you know, come out of spoken word, and yet they work on the page, uh, you know, and that's hard to do. To, uh, also, there's a social message, but the poems have an experimental quality. Everything's kind of thrown in. Uh, how do you work that? Uh, I mean, are, are you thinking the poems? Are you speaking them to yourself? Um, or are you just um, putting that page down word by word? Well, you know, those are two of my uh, uh, loves is... Is, is being on the, talking about what's going on and also ex, uh, playing with the language. Of course, this is art. We're doing art, uh, writing art, poetry art. Uh, and of course, it has to do with my first 20 years of being on the road and being in cafes and on streets in Mission District and Logan Heights, San Diego, and barrios and cafes in North Beach. And also uh, a, a number of, of years uh, being in the workshop 
uh, with Marvin Bell and Jory Graham and Gerald Stern, learning, you know, learning how to make those words, uh, how how to electrify those lines. So bo- put them both together, and then um, being uh, loving the arts, you know, loving visual art and experimental art and sculpture. Right. Could I ask, do you? have some of the words of a poem in your mind before you start working with the words on paper what's the relationship between the creation of the poetry and the actual physical act of putting words down on a piece of paper well I think you got it there uh, it's like it's like hanging out on the beach uh, with with your toes in the water and all of a sudden you feel the currents of a, ti- <laughs> of a tidal wave so a recent phrase that has come to me is uh, first generation I meet a lot of students and young people on the road, and they're so excited. They're doing poetry. They're just uh, live. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, I want to write a first-generation collection of uh, my experience as a first-generation uh, man and student and child and, and human being. Do you think we could hear another poem? Let's please. Could you do that for us? Juan Sh- Felipe Herrera, our Poet Laureate. Sure thing. Uh, this is mud drawing number 15, again, from Senegal Taxi. And remember, the children are running, even though they're ghosts already. They're just still running, trying to get to Senegal, trying to get to the Canary Islands, trying to get to Barcelona, Europe. They just want to get away from the devastation. Mud drawing 15, Abdullah, the village boy with one eye. Uh, no village, no mother, no father, one brother, one sister, no food. No water, no cows, no camels, no trees, no village, no food, no water, no cows, no camels, no trees, no father, no mother, no one brother, one sister, no water, no uh, one brother, no water, no father, no camel, no cow, no village, no tree, no trees, no trees, no village, no father, no mother, no mother, no mother, no water, no water, no village, one sister. No mother, no water. One sister, one sister, one sister. No village. One sister, no village, no trees, no trees, no father, no, no mother. No camels, no camels, no village. No trees, no trees, no trees. One sister, one sister, one. No father, no father, no food. No food, no food. No mother, no mother. One sister, no village, no village. No village, no village, no village, no village, no village, no trees. That's Juan Felipe Herrera reading tonight at Smith College at 7.30, Weinstein Auditorium at Wright Hall. We're here raising money for safe passages. Uh, Please stop by, uh, get a signed book, and uh, get a chance even to meet Juan. Uh, Say hello. Uh, So... You cross so many borders here, it's, it's hard to know where to begin. Um, in your poetry, uh, experimental, traditional, uh, in, uh, in the text, you also write um, different genres. You write for children. Uh, your, um, your most recent children's book, I think, is Portraits of Hispanic Americans, um, which was illustrated by Raul Colon, a dear friend of mine. And uh, that's a beautiful book. You've also written plays. Uh, um, are you, how do you move from one to the other? How do you know that um, this is going to be a children's book, this is going to be a poem? Uh, does it change halfway through? It does. You know, uh, uh, you know, I want to write for as many audiences as possible. Uh, this, this, in a way, was our formal goal, even though it, it just became organic in the 60s when we wanted to uh, address uh, our communities as uh, writers and artists and activists. Uh, it was all about uh, uh, speaking uh, to everyone. It was also about uh, calling upon everyone. It was also apo- about uh, bringing uh, the word and the words that had been locked up of our own history and culture to everyone, and also to just hang back and generate and listen to people's stories that were real and true. And uh, so it j- I just kind of naturally uh, uh, come up with uh, uh, thoughts and ideas for children. I want them to I want them to read in their own language and also to read in English and, and to enjoy books in their own home. We've been speaking with Juan Felipe Herrera, the Poet Laureate of the United States. We are here broadcasting live at Sylvester's Restaurant in downtown Northampton for the Hot Chocathon, raising money for safe passage. You can do that this hour by going to the WHMP website. You can also come down here to Sylvester's, where for your generous contribution, we'll be happy to give you as a thank you an inscribed copy of one of the Poet Laureate's collections of poems. Since we have been talking about women, 
and in particular Safe Passage. I was wondering if I could ask you to read any one of your many poems to talk about the plight of women and the oppression of women. Juan Felipe Herrera, could you do that for us? Yes, uh, this is a poem from uh, After the World in Light, New Selected Poems uh, by University of Arizona Press, and the piece is called The Women Tell Their Stories. The women tell their stories in Austin. They tower over the table. Their hot work hands greet me. They speak of their children. The earth, I think. Oh, yes, the earth. Cloned maize men unload another ship through genetically altered skies and an MC-130 combat talon plane drops into Kandahar, Afghanistan. 15,000 pound fuel, air explosive. What is left now? A flower of ethylene and propylene. Then another cluster bomb filled with 202 bomblets. What am I saying? Better to say peanut butter, pop tarts, rice and potatoes instead. The same color of village fires. A yellow can comes down in the name of the nomenclature. The question of Kabul, Kashmir, Fallujah comes up. The question of colonization and saliva, bacteria, and the atoms of expansive drills into the howling child, this rubble boy. Eat, step lightly on the minds of the Russian-American war. Dear little one, with your folded arms caressing a fender for shelter. That's Juan Philippe Herrera uh, reading tonight. Once again, at Smith College, 730 Weinstein Auditorium, Wright Hall. Do not miss him. He's the United States Poet Laureate. He'll be reading probably, I hope, from his new book, Notes on the Assemblage. Um, will you be reading from 187 Reasons Mexicans Can't Cross the Border? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of comes naturally. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Taking requests. Yeah, I mean, he, the, 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 what great titles. You know, the uh, border crossing with a Lamborghini dream. Um, you know, the, it, it's... It's a shame and it's amazing to me how, you know, reading your poems, and I've been re, um, redoing that over the past few days, um, how prescient some of them are and how our problems still haven't changed, how in many ways uh, we're revisiting some of these same things. Um, I, I loved from your 104 things that your kind of street poet worries about. One of them back in 2004 was Bill Cosby's karma. Uh, <laughs> you know, how I prescient. Mean, you're, you're reading these things now and they're just hitting me. Um, is, is it um, one of your goals as Poet Laureate to raise political consciousness? Well, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I want to let everything come in, and then I want to let everything uh, come out of my hands as I write. And uh, things that are big like that, you know, I, I want to bring them out into the open. You know, all this, a lot of these uh, uh, issues, especially, you know, that we talk about, that we're very concerned about, uh, in a way are hidden. Uh, they're there, but they're hidden. And we get more commercials on buying cars and, and, and uh, ph pharmaceutical drugs and uh, talk shows. That's what we get. And uh, in sports, it's all fine. But it's not fine when we don't get the other 99% of what's really happening. And you have not, um, when you were appointed Poet Laureate, um, was there any, you're allowed to do anything you want. Uh, uh, what were your favorite things that you did in California? And do you have a main project that you're planning on? Uh, the, favorite thing, the favorite things that I did in California was call on California peoples to uh, contribute to a uh, poem called the, the, uh, the Biggest and Most Incredible Poem on Unity in the World. I wanted people to reflect on unity uh, and get away from, uh, or you know, think about segmented diversity. We, you know, we have diversity, but we have it on holidays. And uh, that's it. So I wanted to get into unity. People contributed. I also uh, called on young peoples in fifth grade to uh, join... I promised Joanna anti-bullying project, uh, which they did, and that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you'll continue with um, that as a United States laureate? Well, yes, United States laureate, uh, I have the uh, Casa de Colores House of Colors project online at the Library of Congress, and I want to invite everybody, you're all invited, to jump in. You know, I really want to get uh, your voices in there. What you do is you uh, let's just log in to Library of Congress, look for the Casa de Colores House of Colors tab, and there you are, and contribute uh, 250 characters of your la of your words, of your poetic heart and consciousness, because then it comes out. It's going to be available nationally and internationally, and that's the goal to get our voices 
uh, global and not again we have not crossing having to qualify through number of uh, steps to get our voices out. I want our voices out a thousand percent. Thank you very much. Juan Felipe Herrera, you, can you take us out with a poem? I would like to ask the poet lawyer to do that. This is from a part of his book titled Half of the World in Light. It's from a section called After the Riots, Love After the Riots from 1996. And this is a short poem called 7.30 p.m. Thursday. Will do. 7.30 p.m. Thursday. Below the helicopter, running from the system, leaving L.A., going with these whipping blades pulling over my face. They swarm into me, bellow, in the name of Dante Alighieri, follow his equestrian milk to the tenth ring. Ragged, ivory, riot buildings held in orgasm, circular wrestling, efficiencies with our thighs that splash, waters of cinnamon guns, this thief's oboe, this new world, mechanical bedrooms in the name in the center of X, Avenue X. Outside, yes, there is chalk dust and 18-wheelers on fire. Poet Laureate Juan Felipe Herrera will be at Smith College this evening. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do still have some of the books here. If you want to come down and make a donation to the right. WHMP Safe Passage Hot Chocolate Run team, we've got Elements Hot Tub gift certificates, uh, Elements Hot Tub and Spa gift certificates. We've got UMass basketball tickets. We've got bowling from Spare Time Bowling Passage. We've got a partridge in a pear tree, too. But yes. We, but we and you can come down and make a donation to the team. We'll hear some from the people from Safe Passage coming up a little bit later in the show.